I want to bring in psychologist Judy Ho. She's joining us uh, via Skype today. But first, let's take a look at some of these eerie parallels that we have between father and son. Hannah Anderson is 16, the same age as the girl DiMaggio's father was stalking. Hannah's brother Ethan was killed along with her mother. The elder DiMaggio threatened to kill the brother of the girl he was infatuated with. She tells KFMB that DiMaggio's father showered her with gifts like concert tickets. DiMaggio Jr. took Hannah on a trip to Hollywood last year. It's almost as if DiMaggio was reenacting all the details of his dad's obsession. Judy, how about that? It's bizarre, isn't it? Or is it predictable? Very bizarre, Vinny, but at the same time predictable because this is really a good example of modeling. You know, you learn from your parents. Those are the first models that you have when you're born and when you're a child. And I think that this is kind of a, a terrible coping skill. I do believe we have lost our connection with Judy Ho on Skype. I'm waiting for her to come back. It's not coming back yet. We're going to try to fix that. And we are waiting for new details about Hannah's rescue and how she's doing now that she's safe. And that's expected to come out in a news conference in just about an hour from now, and you'll see it on Evening Express. Um, that's coming up 5.30 Eastern. And then tonight on Nancy Grace, Hannah Anderson's grandfather breaks his silence after the stunning rescue of his abducted 16-year-old granddaughter. What details will he reveal about his granddaughter's terrifying ordeal? You'll find out tonight at 8 on Nancy Grace. And Judy is back. Great to have you back, Judy. Thank you. <laughs> you like disappeared for a minute and now you're back. So uh, continue, please. You're, you're talking about this father-son relationship, modeling and, and, and how the younger DiMaggio may have been, you know, learning from dad. That's right. You know, when, when his dad was in distress, this is a coping skill that he used. You know, when he couldn't get what he wanted, he took it. And I think the younger DiMaggio learned this from a young age and unfortunately just really replicated even down to some of the small details you just mentioned, because that's really the only thing that he's ever seen, ever witnessed from like an adult male figure. And, and you know, the other part of this that as a lot of people um, really, uh, th th we don't understand how there were no signs and how this man entrusted. Do, do you think there's a sense that this was his plan all along or did it just happen to happen? You know, I do believe that this was his plan all along. And when you look at other people who have conducted kidnappings, oftentimes it is a trusted family member, trusted friend of the family. And you see this because they need some way to get close enough to actually get these people to trust them enough to go with them. And so, you know, one thing that I think about this particular person's planning abilities is, you know, he was addicted to a game called EverQuest. That game is a strategy game, and he spent hours on that game becoming a really powerful character. And sometimes people do that. They become enwrapped in their video game world and learn these kind of skills of strategizing because they're not getting what they want in their real life. And then sometimes those lines become blurred. So I think he was starting to take some of that, I guess, skill set, if you will, that he learned from that video game world into his real life. Judy, how about uh, Ma, uh, not my dad and daughter tonight as they are reunited? Uh, what do they need to do to try to work through this? Because they've lost half the family is gone, and it's it's I mean it's worst thing possible. But there is some sense of relief because she was rescued. Right. Well, you know, it's like the good news amongst all the bad news that's been going on. And really, all they have is each other now. And so I think they really need to take care of each other. Um, they have to be careful not to blame themselves for what happened. You know, they probably both feel very helpless because they were not able to prevent the death of Hannah's mom and the brother. And there's often blaming um, in these situations. And so they really need to do that, take care of each other, lean on their family for support and get professional intervention. You know, this is way beyond any kind of normal stressor and they really need some professional help with that yeah and in the sense that you, we've gotten from hearing that dad speak I, I think they're gonna be okay but obviously it's gonna take some time all right Judy you're gonna stick around most votes psychologist Judy Ho back with us now um, did you miss me Judy I did Vinny did you miss oh, me? are you telling the truth oh uh, you can't tell right can't Women are tell. Better at lying, is that right <laughs> who do you think's better at lying well, you know, I think it 
depends on the kind of lie. Women are great at lying to protect other people's feelings. I think that just as uh, the little clip just showed, you know, women are always concerned about other people and how they're feeling. And so oftentimes their lies have that type of content, making sure that their friends don't think that they look bad in a dress. Um, but also women are more likely to fake positive feelings and they do this very easily. Whereas men, you know, the emotions are kind of on their face. You know, it's a lot harder for them to hide how they really feel. I think men sometimes, you know, they can be better at lying when it's coming to things like exaggerating their own attributes or their accomplishments. And they're used to doing that. You know, they're socially conditioned to talk themselves up to get a job or to get a mate. And so I think those are the differences right there. Yeah, that's the ticket. Judy, <laughs> thank you so much, Judy. Great hanging out with you today. And that's the truth. That's the truth. All right.